There's something I've been told several times, which is quite incredible. I wonder if anyone's ever said it to you. Did you know, there are more people alive today than have ever lived? Isn't that amazing? I find that so incredible. Yes, it is incredible. And do you know what incredible means? That which cannot be believed. It is incredible because it's flagrant rubbish. People come from other people. This is a fact. That's you. Now, how many brothers and sisters does the average person have up today? Well, in some countries it's none. Uh, in Britain it's about one. And in some other countries, generally the poorer third world ones, it's more. But anyway, let's, let's be generous. And let's say that everyone alive today is from a family of six. Uh, we can afford to be generous because what we're trying to disprove is so ludicrous. Now, you must have had at least two parents. There's father, there's mother. And unless these are brother and sister, these must have had their own parents too. So there are your grandparents. So that's four, six people accounting for six. Hmm. So uh, I can account for the people who are alive today with only going back two generations. Ah, but this is too simple, isn't it? This assumes that there's only one generation alive at once. Well, I'm alive and I'm old enough to have kids. No, really. And my parents are alive. So let's say that there are three generations who are alive all at once. And they're all from families of six. Now we get this. Here's you. Here are your brothers and sisters. Here's mum and dad, both from families of six, your aunts and uncles. And here are your grandparents, again, from families of six. That's 42 people in all. That's quite a family. So now then, how many ancestors will account for this lot? Well, you must have had at least eight great-grandparents. And assuming that these weren't incestuous brothers and sisters, that's 16 great-great-grandparents and 32 great-great-great-grandparents. 56 people here. Now these are all only children. You see, in the past, absolutely everyone was an only child. So the population was dying out, dying out, and then suddenly, boom, this big family. 56 now dead ancestors in just three generations. And how long's a generation? Well, if we say 25 years, it's not even a century. But, you say, it's even more complicated than that, because, well, your aunts and uncles would have had children, so you would have had hordes of cousins, and your grandparents were from families of six as well, so you'd have vast regiments of second cousins. Yeah, all right, let's indulge you. Here's you, here are your siblings, here's mum, here's dad, all your aunts and uncles, cousins, and so many second cousins that I had to draw them three deep just to get them on the board. Right, this is 312 people in all. Was there ever in the world a family this big? I mean, you'd, you'd have to start doing your Christmas cards in June. Right. So, how many ancestors will account for this lot? Well, it's possible that they could all be descended from just eight people. And assuming that these weren't incestuous brothers and sisters, then that's from 16, 32, 64, and so forth. Six generations of single child ancestors gets us to 504. So that easily accounts for the huge family still alive today. And what's six generations? Two centuries at the very most? And a man's been around for considerably longer than that. In fact, he's been around for about two million years. To give you an idea of what that means, get this. 90% of all the people who have ever lived were hunter-gatherers. Just think of it. Wow. More people alive today than have ever lived. No, 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 no. You're wrong. People derive from other people. Where else do you think they come from? Cro-Magnon man alone has been around for 40,000 years. You just haven't thought this through. Do you know how many generations that is? Good grief. I'm sorry, but it's the only language they understand. And that 90% has shaped human physical development. All those hundreds and thousands of generations favouring some characteristics, rejecting others, gradually perfecting the hunter-gatherer. Body size and structure, dietary requirement, and the brain, which determines our instincts. We are adapted to their world, not ours.